welcome guys in this new video on the game engine series now in the previous video we talked about the collision handler class we created our basic collision handler class which we're actually going to be using to check if there is some kind of collision with the map or with any kind of object so we we didn't test it we didn't use it to make any collision and all stuff because uh, the video was getting too long and we decided to move and do it in the next video in this one actually so in this video we're gonna be using that uh, collision handler class to check if the player is colliding with the ground and we're also gonna be implementing the jump state of the player so our player is actually going to be jumping I can show you the result right here on the screen you can see we have this box collider the reason why this thing is bouncing right now is because my computer isn't so powerful and I'm using a software which use a lot of results to record the screen so if I actually turn that off this should normally do this and yeah it doesn't matter anyway so I just created this box which I'm rendering around the player and you can see wherever this box is we simply hit the ground that's why I call it the box collider and you can see our player can jump so we're also going to be changing the, the animation of the player while he's jumping and while he's falling to make this more real and make more sense and we're also going to be see how we can make this box you know fit the player size actually so let's get started now i won't write everything i'm just going to be explaining step by step what i did and you will have all the code so uh because if i start writing stuff here it will get it will get too much messy and we'll have too much things that we'll have to explain and that will be too long the video will get too long so i think it's better for us that i simply kind of you know um show you what i did so the first thing uh we need to do we need to define some important variables that we're going to be using to make our animations or to make sure the player is jumping so like state now you can see right here we have these two variables we have the is jumping and is grounded is jumping is actually saying yeah the player is actually jumping right now and we'll use that later to change the animation of the player so if the player is jumping then we change the animation and set the, the animation to the jumping animation that's why we need this variable yeah that's important and is grounded is actually used to make sure the player can jump right now so always want to make sure the player is grounded before he can jump so you could have called this can jump so that would be the same the same the same variable actually now we also want to define like this jump time right here the jump time is the time that the player will take to move up so it has nothing to, to do with move moving down but the time the player will take to move up so when the player leave the ground you see he reach like this top right here and start falling so i didn't you know release the button before he start falling but my player can still jump with different height when i want according to how i push the button so when i push the button we have this kind of timer with the value time that we have there which is started and until we reach that time the player will still moving up that's why you can actually define how long the player can jump and yeah that depends on how many time you give him to do that and the force is the force which we actually going to be applying on the player during that time so that he can move upward that's why we need that and we if you remember in the previous video we created this class called collider so the collider is actually the box around the player as you can see the box around the player that we have right here and we also need that because we're going to be checking the collision with that one and we also define this variable right here called last safe position because we need this because you we want to make sure that if the player hit the wall for example you need to bring it back to the last safe position he has before the collision because if you don't do that the player will just get stuck in the wall and you know it will be pretty weird so that's why we always get the last safe position of the player every time before anything happens so if the player hit a wall 
then we simply say okay go back to the last safe position you had then we simply remove the collision we have because if you don't do that you will get stuck with the collision forever and that would be weird so those are the basic variable we need to define and you can see up here we simply uh, define some constant for the jump time and the jump force so those value added so you you will be playing around with this and see what fit for you so that's what i use for mine so i'm just going to switch over to the cpp file now in the cpp file we initialize those two variables the mem member variable the time and the force we also initialize our collider and uh, we set the buffer so if you watch the, the the previous video uh we have this buffer which is actually the margin around the box collider between the texture of the player and the box collider or the padding whatever you might want to call it so for now we set it to zero that's why you see there is a lot of space between the player and the box and that's not good you see we have collision with the ground but the the foot of display of this player is not touching the ground right now but we'll settle that later that's not a big deal so we also need to initialize our rigid body and we set the gravity to 3.0f if you go to your rigid body that edge you will see that all rigid body you create actually have this gravity value right here but we don't want our player to be too much affected by the gravity that's why we decrease the value of that gravity there are many ways of dealing with this we could have simply add more force and leave the gravity to nine we could have done it like that or give more time to the player to jump and leave the gravity to nine but you know i just decided to do it like this you will simply play around with those value and see which one actually fit to your desire and you will simply you know uh, do it as you want so you can anytime pause and you know simply uh, write the code if you want now the next step i wanted to draw that box collider that's why i created this right here so this is just a temporarily written code which is used to draw our box collider that's why we did this so since we're not using the draw texture stuff uh, function method to you know to draw this right on the screen we always want to draw this um according to the camera that's why we call it we use the camera right here to recalculate the x and y position of this of this box we always want to make sure it fits with the player position because if i don't then let's say let me show you for example so if i remove this and simply uh run this you will see that if i start moving the box will also go away because the value is no longer calculated with the camera position and you know the reason why it's starting here in the middle is because we've said that when uh, the player reach the middle of the screen of the map we start moving you know we start translating this position that's why we actually do this like that and uh, that's that's the reason why we need to recalculate the position of the box and make sure it always stays around the player that's the reason we use this so this is just fun for debug purpose you can later then remove it if you don't need it anymore but you always need that and you could probably go ahead and create this inside of your collider class so you just create like a collider in your collider class you create a method which actually draws this value right here so you can simply do it like that and you will not have to deal with it right here now we go into the update function so um this right here is what you already know there's nothing new i haven't changed anything here you just set the player state uh, to idle if there is no force apply when we get in the update function we set the, the, the state to idle so if we push a or d we want to make sure we move the player horizontally so according to the button we push we can move forward or backward so that's that's actually what it go, what what's going on there now what we've added is this part right here till here so you could be interested in this so it starts right here till here that's what we've added we can simply pause the video and copy it down and you know whatever now here on the top we want to check if the button g is pushed so if the if the person right now want to jump if you push the, the g button and the player should be grounded if that's the case if the player is grounded then 
okay we set the state to is jumping and we also want to make sure the player is not is no longer grounded because if you don't do that then you won't know when the player is grounded so that's why you want to make sure when the player leave the ground we just say okay is no longer grounded and uh, here we have rigid body we apply the force upward and you have the jump force so this upwards of I, we define it in the rigid body you should know that that should that shouldn't be a problem we have forward backward upward downward so that's those constant we define in the rigid body and we just move upward so and now this first one was to somehow trigger the jump even so to say but we also want to make sure you can see right here whenever i try to jump if i push the button longer the player go till the end till the time that has been given so that he can jump but if i just push it and release you see he jump he also jump according to how i push the, i push the button so the first one right here this first event of this button pushed is to trigger this event because if you see when i push the button is grounded is set to false the player is no longer on the ground the next time we come in this loop the next time we call the update function this will not be fulfilled anymore so we won't do any we won't actually do anything in here anymore this will be disabled and now we have this other part right here where we actually check is the player jumping because this guy set the jumping state and this one use that jumping state to you know uh, to uh, move the to move the player uh, continuously upward as long as we want and that's why we also check the time do we still have the time to jump and this time will simply be decreased using the delta time so every time as long as we're pushing this button we're going to be decrementing the value of the jump time with the delta time we remove the delta time every time every time this function is called we remove the delta time till the value became smaller than zero then we know we can't jump anymore this this um, if statement will not be fulfilled anymore and then we will we will not apply this force anymore and the player will start falling that's why we have this uh yeah if this doesn't work anymore then we're probably not jumping anymore we're falling instead that's why we say it's jumping is false yeah we also we also create another variable called falling which could actually because you could have different animation for jumping and falling and the fact that the player is not jumping doesn't mean he's falling because he could he could be running that's that's the problem he could be running that's why you need another variable called like is falling to make sure that okay you want to check if the player is not jumping anymore if he's not grounded but he's not jumping anymore then he's falling and now if that happened we want to reset the jump time to the value you want to make sure you always bring the jump time to the uh, to the constant to the value that it should have because if you try to jump again the jump time is already smaller than zero he won't jump anymore that's why i want to make sure okay set the jump time back to the value we have now if you want to move an object you will always separate the x axis and the y axis because oh i called this function twice that's i don't need this because i already have it here that's probably the reason why we have more thing to deal with but okay that's that's not a big deal it still works so if i run this to make sure i ah there you are maybe maybe something was wrong let me run this again ah okay it's just a small problem okay now um yeah what we actually do here we update our rigid body position because the rigid body is the guy who actually um you know inherit the the position that the the transform of our player should have so we calculate the position using the rigid body and we use that rigid body transform uh, position to update our transform but as you can see right here before we do anything before we start checking collision we take the current state the current position the current transform of the player on the x axis you can see we've separate the x and the y axis and store it inside the last position state say before we move the player with the rigid body position because we get the rigid body position right here and add it to our translate but before we do that we want to save this last position into into this uh, this transforming the last save position because till now there there were no collision so we can use this as save position then we can move the player using the rigid body position 
and then we calculate the box collider you always want to up, update the box collider this collider right here that's why we need to call this and we take the position of the player and this is the width and the height it's a rectangle so you already know that and right here we check okay is the player hitting the ground right here right now so this is on the x-axis you can see we're only doing this on the x-axis if you do this for both axis y and x at the same time it won't work I, I I tell you that you can try it won't work so we have to separate the X and the Y axis and deal with each one separately we check for the X axis first and then we deal with the Y axis and the Y axis is almost the same just that we we have to handle the jump for the Y axis that's why we have this it stop down here so you can see then if there is collision we bring the player back to the last safe position we have that's why our player will always stay on the ground because we're bringing it back to the safe position we have so that's you can simply yeah so now on the y-axis we do the same thing we get the last safe position on the y-axis we move the player we calculate the box collider and um, yeah if you even calculate the box collider before moving the player this won't work this this order is really important because we're calculating according to the actual position of the player so if you update if you calculate this box before updating the position of the transform he, your player will just get stuck in the ground he won't move so let me show you this on the x-axis for example just cut this and put it before this and compile this and see so it's coming now you see it yeah he gets stuck he can't move anymore you see it's because we're updating the box collider before updating the position the transform of the player so this will bring a lot of a lot of problem that's why it's important to really to know what you're doing and yeah always make sure you're doing the right thing and here we also check do we have collision with the ground you know on the y-axis so in that case we simply set the ground to true that means the player can jump right now because he's touching the ground and we set the last position to this to make sure that this is going on but if that's not the case we make sure we set the ground to false that's important and the rest right here is normal if you remember we use this origin to set the position of the camera and there is nothing um, special right here so that's that's um, why did I claim this? That's crazy, man! I claim my texture manager with here. Well, remove that. We're going to drop. I'm actually going to say drop because I wanted to drop the texture manager of the player. I think it's M, but this player doesn't actually have. Uh, so, so that's actually how we can create uh, this. Uh, this jump and collision handler but I also want to mention that you need to check which map you actually colliding with that's why you need to know exactly because if you remember let me open my map my tile where is this weird program right here hope it's open so yeah perfect you see my map right here has two layers so I want to make sure I'm using the right one to check my collision so um you can see right here I'm calling front so I'm taking the first one uh, the, the other is sometime messing around I don't know which one but this guy here is the first one this one is the collision map we're using right now but if you see the other right here you think front will be this guy but it's it ain't. this guy is the front guy so that's actually a little bit weird but you need to exactly make sure you are catching the right tile map and yeah also make sure your collision function right here has everything and uh, yeah it should normally uh, not be a big problem for you to have the same result as me now one thing we can try to do so we can see how it was important to have this buffer we can simply go here and kind of put something like um, what can we put there as value to make so let's put something like 60 right here minus 60 and here we put like minus 20 let's see what it 
actually does i don't know if it's oh that's weird so um i don't want to spend time on that you can play around with that and see which value actually fit to your desire and uh, yeah if you find good values if you have same character as me you can simply uh, let me know which value you use in the comment section below now there is one thing we can add in this uh, we can add something to make sure our player the animation of our player is using another a jumping state for example um, the way we can do that actually I don't remember if I do have this in my folder let me open my project folder soft engine we have the assets folder and here we have the idle we have the run so I don't know if we're seeing this we have the idle and run we need to have uh, the jump one also we need to have the jump so let me find this on my computer jump jump there it is so I can paste it right here we have the jump so it's a sequence of four frames uh, that we're actually going to be using to make our jump so here there it is we have four frames for the jump so I need to close this we have to load this into our uh, application into our map so we go to the game engine you can see right here we have the player run here is the idle here is the run here is the jump so we just put jump right here and make sure we also load jump.png yeah uh, i took the wrong the wrong image i think it's two frame because i cut it off uh, i'm not using the right one so let me copy it again this one oh sorry this one should be the right one so i have to remove this we only use two frame for our jump we don't want to use too much frame so it's that and he's in the air we also have another one for falling because the one i showed you with four frames it's actually jump and fall because he's jumping and falling and you can see this is where he's in the air when he start falling when he's falling so i cut it in two uh, in two image sequence because i separate my jump with my falling those are two different animations that's why i cut this one in um, separate files so we load this jump file you can go to our player and uh, yeah you can see right here there is there are many ways we can actually do this you know we can simply go in here since we know we're jumping here we can simply set the value right here and say copy this copy this and paste it right here and we'll simply put the jump right here the number of frames i think that's two and we can you know increase the value of the animation so let's see if this is actually working we hope it does so we jump you can see when it start jumping you know it changed but just for a little time the reason is because we're actually doing it inside of this guy right here this should be ah uh, okay let's do it another way actually we can simply uh, go down here and check you can simply say if if we we'll later create a function which handle all this state of the player but for now just do it like this if is jumping so if it's jumping then we want to set the state right here at the end i hope this time is going to be the so you see it's really fast and uh, yeah that's weird because uh it, it's not working when the player is falling so we could say we could also say or oh, not grounded because we don't have the fall animation right now that's why it doesn't uh seems to be like we want it to be is grounded so whenever the player is in the air that would be enough we want it to be uh Ah, that's weird. It's, ah, we say it's grounded. It's not grounded. That's what we want to say. I'm sorry. It's not grounded. So wh whenever the player is in the air, we want to make sure we always, you see. But the animation time is too fast. That's why he's like, this is weird. But we're going to handle that later. 
that's just something i wanted to show you in this video so thank you guys for watching videos on medical channel please think about to support me on patreon leave a comment in the section below and uh, yeah thank you ciao